ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam, قال الله تعالى: ولا تنكح المشركات حتى يؤمن، ولا أمة مؤمنة خير من مشركة ولو أعجبتكم، ولا تنكح المشركين حتى يؤمنوا، ولا عبد مؤمن خير من مشرك ولو أعجبكم أولئك يدعون إلى النار والله يدعو إلى الجنة والمغفرة بإذنه ويبين آياته للناس لعلهم يتذكرون The meanings of this verse Do not marry the mushrik women until they believe and indeed a slave believing female is much better than a free mushrik female even if the mushrik one pleases you ولا تنكحوا do not give your daughters in marriage to mushrik men until they believe ولا عبد مؤمن خير من مشرك ولو اعجبكم and indeed a slave Believing man is much better for your daughters than a free mushrik man. Why? Ulaika yad'oona ila nar. The mushrik women and the mushrik man invite you to the hellfire. They will lead you to the hellfire. On the other hand, Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannati wal-maghfirati bi-idni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you to marry believing women and believing, women, believing men for your daughters. And if you do this, you will get jannah and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his leave. وَيُبَيِّنْ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And he's explaining to you 
He's making clear to you his ayat so that you may remember. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the reason I brought this subject up is I received a phone call from a person that I know. He's not from here. He's out of state. And his daughter is considering a Christian man for marriage. And you cannot imagine what this father is going through. It is so painful for a father to experience that. Even by the way, if they are not committed totally to the deen. It's a heartbreaking experience. And he basically asked me if I could talk to his daughter. And subhanallah, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yahdi al -jamia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide this daughter. But the verse I recited in Surah Al-Baqarah with another verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah Al-Yawma Uhilla lakum al-tayyibat Wa ta'amu al-ladheena utu al-kitaba hillu lakum wa ta'amukum hillu lahum wal muhsanatu min al-mu'minat والمحصنات من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم. The piece that I want from this verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah is and the chaste women from the people who were given the scripture before you, meaning the Christian and the Jews, are lawful for you. If you put that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, with that verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, you come out with two rulings. Once it comes to marrying non-Muslims. Once it comes to Muslims marrying non-Muslims. Ruling number one has to do with the man. A Muslim male can marry two categories of non-Muslims. Jews, Christians, females. But remember, the law of this religion described them with al-muhsanat. Chaste. Even so, they have shirk. But the quality that you look for in a Christian or a Jew, female to marry as a man, the fact that they are chaste. Chaste, not chaste. C H A S T E, not chaste. Virtuous women. They do not commit adultery. And a question is, where do you find those? I mean, in this society where we live, not our community, but virginity is a sign of imperfection, that you're not beautiful. No man is interested in you. And we know that they are having what they call sexual education in schools. I read three years ago that in New York, they are thinking about distributing Azzaqumullah condoms to primary school students. It's very difficult to find that quality, to say the least.
That also means if a man marries a Buddhist, a Hindu, or any religion that claims Christianity, but the mainstream Christianity do not consider them Christians, this marriage in the sight of the Sharia is illegitimate, invalid. It's like committing adultery. So this is for the man. As for the women, and underline this with three million lines if you want, a Muslim female can not marry but a Muslim man. That would include a Christian or a Jew. هذه شريعتنا وهذا ديننا. When you bring this up, نغمة اللي أنت women comes up. The people who sing Islam is putting women down. The unquality or the double standard. comes up and this father asked me to speak to his daughter and she asked me this question why to answer this really you need a lecture and inshallah tomorrow between Maghrib and Isha I will answer this question why Even so, the word why is not right. We should say, what is the wisdom? Because هذا شرع, هذا دين. When you say why, you're questioning Allah and his messenger. And you are in no position to question Allah and his messenger, period. You can only try to find the wisdom. behind that ruling. But to give you a, a, a piece of what we will say tomorrow, insha'Allah, we as Muslims, we believe in the messengership of Moses, of Musa, alayhi salam. But a Jewish man rejects your messenger. He does not believe in the messengership of Muhammad. You're aware of that. A Muslim man believes in the messengership of Isa. But a Christian man does not accept your messenger. This is so simple to say. But it has devastating impacts. Here's a scenario. A Muslim man marries a Christian woman. And he tells her, listen, I do not drink. Drinking is haram. Can we please not have alcohol in our house? You're not really harming her religion. By doing that, drinking is not a requirement for a Christian to be a Christian. You're actually helping her in her path. Listen, I do not eat pork. I'm a Muslim. Can we not have pork in our house? You're really helping her because pork is unlawful for a Christian anyways to eat. And we know from Hadith Abi Hurairah 
that when Isa alayhi salam comes back, he will kill this vine, al khinzir This is really a symbolic stating that I have never made pork halal for you to eat, Christians. If you are a Muslim man, you're going to be asking your, Mus your Christian wife to be dressed properly. Not to show her body. <coughs> Look at the icons of Mary and in their own tradition. They used to wear loose clothes. Have you ever seen a picture of Mary not having a hijab on? Maryam, Mary, Mary. And she existed at a time when the Romans and the Greeks were dancing and showing their body and all type of funny things. So you're really helping her as a Christian. And I can go on, but let's look at the other side and this is hypothetical because I cannot say if a Muslim woman marries a Christian man, because there is no such a thing. This marriage is invalid. It's not marriage. It's adultery. But hypothetical. The Christian man would tell the Muslim women, listen, I like to drink. You don't have to drink. But we're going to have alcohol in the house, so I could get a booze every now and then. This is a threat to her religion. Because the command in the Quran, once it came to alcohol, do not come near it. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu, innama al-khamru, wal-maysiru, wal-ansab, wal-azlam, rijisun min amal al-shaytan. Don't come near it. It's near you. So her deen is threatened. He is a sick man. He would say, listen, I like to feel proud with my wife walking around me showing her stuff. Can you please show some of your qualities to my friends? That's threat to her. Haram. Devastating to her deen. Inshallah tomorrow, if you want to learn more after Maghrib, I will answer this question. What is the wisdom? A Muslim female cannot marry an un-Muslim, including a Christian and a Jew. And what is the wisdom also that a Muslim man is allowed to marry a Christian or a Jew? There is a wisdom behind it. Even after I, I went through this, the daughter is still debating the idea. Then I told her, can I tell you a story? She said, yes. During the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and SubhanAllah, any time that you feel cornered, just go back to the generation, that generation. You feel a stranger in, the, in this world. But you feel at home once you open the books and read about that generation. When the Prophet ﷺ established the treaty or the truce or the pledge either name with Al-Ansar in Medina about receiving him in the Medina and supporting and helping him out to deliver his message. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent to Medina two companions, Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiyallahu an wa Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum to teach the people in Medina Al-Quran, Wal-Salah, Wal-Islam. But in Medina, there was a woman that a lot of Muslims do not know anything about her. 
But this woman, subhanallah, one of a kind. And her story is out of this world. She was actually given glad tiding of Jannah by the one who does not speak out of desire, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كما في صحيح مسلم he said صلى الله عليه وسلم دخلت الجنة فسمعت خشفة I entered Jannah and I heard a noise behind me I looked فإذا الغميصاء أو العميصاء أو الرميساء three wordings أم سليم بنت ملحان the mother of Anas ابن مالك خادم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the servant of the prophet أم سليم was married to the father of Anas his name is مالك ابن النضر and he used to travel a lot he traveled at the time when Mus'ab arrived in Medina, Umm Sulaim heard about Islam. Al-Fitra. She became so interested. She went and she inquired more from Mus'ab. And then she took her shahada. She became a Muslim. While her husband is absent. And subhanallah, Anas was like five years old at this time. She used to play with him and say, Anas, she, say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Get ready, Anas, I'm preparing you so when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa comes to Medina, I want you to go and learn from him, Anas. I wish our mothers can do that to their children. When Malik returned, he found his wife changed because Islam changes. If you live Islam, you will change. But if Islam is a name tag, you're going to stay in Jahiliyyah and will give you the name Muslim. He did not like it. He said to her, Asabati qalat amant. And every time he would hear her telling Anas about Allah, about the Messenger of Allah, he would get so upset. And he would say to her, La tufsidi waladi alay. Don't spoil my son. Please stop. فَقَالَتْ إِنِّي لَا أُفْسِدُ فَتَقُولْ إِنِّي لَا أُفْسِدُ I'm not spoiling him. I'm preparing him to be and to be and to be. He got angry. And he left home. Subhanallah, somebody killed him in the road. He died. It became known in Medina that this noble, prestigious, wise, please read about her. One of a kind. One of a kind, Umm Sulaim. Just Google Umm Sulaim. Everyone became interested in marrying her. One of them was the best in town. A bachelor that no woman, no woman would turn down. The dream man, the dream husband. Wealth, knowledge, prestige. His name is Abu Talha Al Ansari. Abu Talha came to Umm Sulaim. I would like to marry you. My dear daughters, my dear sisters in Islam, my dear mothers, listen to what Umm Sulaim 
said to Abi Talha, قالت له, she said, Wallahi, ya Aba Talha, by Allah, Aba Talha, mithluk la yurad. No woman would refuse someone like you. You? ولكن امرأة مسلمة وأنت رجل كافر لا تحل لي But I'm a Muslim woman Muslim woman You're a kafir You reject my Allah You reject my messenger Don't you love Allah and his messenger? How can you then place that person who rejects Allah, your Allah, Ilahak? How can you show him any type of feelings to the extent that you're willing to marry that person? Give me a break. It's a claim. That love is a claim. Abu Talha was shocked. Abu Talha was refused. He thought like any other man that it's money. He went back home, he got some gold and silver, and he poured it in front of her. فَقَالَتْ وَاللَّهِ يَا أَبَا طَلْحَ By Allah, يَا أَبَا طَلْحَ It is not about the money. Someone like you is not to be refused. وَلَكِنِّ امْرَأَةٌ مُسْلِمَةٌ ولكن امرأة مسلمة وأنت رجل كافر لا تحل لي يا الله اللهم ارزقنا نساء مثل هؤلاء يا رب أما مسلم ومن أن ينوط أبا طلحة my dowry is not gold and silver. My dowry is your Islam. Abu Talha became shocked. You see that caliber makes you reflect. Start thinking what kind of a religion is that? That comes between this from happening that hinder this from happening he went and he inquired asked and asked and asked and you know at the end he became a muslim i know some of you may assume that he became a muslim just to marry um Sulaim. read about abu talha you may hear those fundraisers sometimes standing up and saying, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ And they narrate to you this hadith. You will never be able to attain righteousness and piety which will lead you to Jannah until you spend from that which you love most. Abu Talha heard this verse. He said, Ya Rasool Allah, I want to get righteousness and piety and I want Jannah, O Messenger of Allah. And the most beloved wealth to me is a garden called Bayruha. Ya Rasul Allah, I want to give it to Allah. Charity. He did not become a Muslim just to marry Musulman. Read about what Abu Talha did in the Battle of Uhud. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was exposed to the disbelievers to kill him, Tarras, he stood like this in front of the messenger, protecting him from death. But the shahid, Umm Sulaim. Umm Sulaim. You know, between me and myself, I say, We live in a country where we are the minority, really. The majority are Christian and Jews. 
and our daughters are exposed to a lot of Christian and Jews. What did we do to protect this from happening? It's a nightmare for a father, by the way. And if you have a daughter, don't just wait until it happens. Be proactive. Ideally, we don't have a high school here in Colorado. We don't. I mean, Muslim high school, we don't. And this is the age when these girls start thinking about boys. I mean, we need to give them that education. We need to tell them about Umm Sulaim. We need to tell them about, listen, this is not the right thing. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم Brothers and sisters in Islam وما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمره It is not fitting for someone to be called a believer believing man or believing woman that when Allah and his messenger rules rule something some issue that they have a choice Allah tells the women that you cannot marry but a Muslim. What are you going to do? هذا هو الإسلام. What is the Islam? The word the Islam. To surrender. The Islam. The word the Islam linguistically means to surrender, to submit, to say, I hear and I obey. If you question the command. Then let's study Aqeedah again. Because one of the names, one of the attributes of Allah is Al-Hakim. The All-Wise. So when He commands you to do something that you do not understand, then you rely on that belief, on that name. The all wise. There must be a wisdom. During the time of the Prophet, وسلم, there was a companion, Subhanallah, يعني ينطبق عليه قول النبي في صحيح مسلم إن الله لا ينظر إلى صوركم ولا أجسامكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم الله سبحانه وتعالى does not look at your faces nor your bodies a person may walk like he's a little god in earth and he's hated despicable in the sight of Allah because of his heart stinky heart filthy heart filled with envy hate This companion, subhanallah, short, poor, black, ugly. This is how it's worded in the hadith. Damama, damin. He doesn't have a very good physical looking. He's not 
the dream man that a woman would like to have. But his iman, his faith. So one day he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'd like to get married one day. He's saying it out of despair, really. فَقَالَ لَهُ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him, أنا أزوجك. I will get you married. يا جليبيب. His name is Julaybib. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَزَوَّجُنِي يعني Who's going to marry me? It was the habit of the people in Medina that when a father or a mother have a daughter at the age of marriage that they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him to help them in getting her married, recommending somebody, talking to one of his companions and so forth. A father approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ in Ibnati يعني, is about is the age of marriage. Can you recommend someone for her? For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ana Uzawijuha. The man thought that the Prophet Sallallahu is the one who will marry her. Fakal Nirmaini. That's wonderful. Go ahead. Fakal not me. He said, Not me. Ana Unkihuha Julaibib. I will give her in marriage to Julaybib. Julaybib? Let me talk to her mother. He went back home, spoke with his wife. While the daughter is behind the curtain, hearing the conversation, But the father told the mother, Rasulullah wants to get our daughter married. فَقَالَتْ نِعْمَتْ عَيْنِي What a wonderful thing. He also she thought that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is the one who will marry her. فَقَالَ not him. He said not, not him, no. إِنَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُنْكِحَهَا جُلَيْبِيبًا he wants her to get married to Julaybib. Immediately the woman, Julaybib, ha ha la, no, wallahi la, la unkihu ha Julaybib. The daughter comes from behind the curtain and she speaks to her father and her mother saying, how dare you Refuse a husband who was recommended to me by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi la atazawwaju julaybiba. By Allah, I will marry him. La arfud. I will not refuse someone the choice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can a Muslim woman refuse the choice of Allah and his messenger to you that you marry a Muslim? How dare you do that? And you go marry an un-Muslim? How can you do that? What kind of a heart is that? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa got them married. And he made this beautiful dua that we should say. اللهم صب عليها الخير صبا ولا تجعل عيشها كدا Oh Allah, pour goodness in her. The morning of the wedding, not yet married, the caller for jihad. يعني the wording says the battle of Uhud. حي على الجهاد. That's how the caller does the call. Let's go for jihad. You think Jilaybib will hesitate? It's my wedding day. Marching. Out. The battle ends. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his companion saying, هل تفقدون من أحد? Are you missing anybody? 
They looked around and said, لا يا رسول الله. Rasul Sallam for the second time asked, هل تفقدون من أحد? Are you missing anybody? قالوا لا يا رسول الله. The third time, and then he said, وَلَكِنِّي أَفْقِدُ جُلَيْبِيبَ I do not see Julaybib. Look for him, please. They looked for him. They found him dead next to seven disbelievers. They called the Prophet ﷺ to the scene. Rasul ﷺ says, هَذَا مِنِّي وَأَنَا مِنْهِ هذا مني وأنا منه هذا مني وأنا منه He's from me and I'm from him We're related the hearts Iman, faith قتل سبعة He killed seven Then they killed him he carried him sallallahu alayhi wasallam on his own hands and he placed him in his graveyard and he buried him. Anas ibn Malik, the narrator of this hadith, al hadith fi mustad al imam, a wording also of Abi Barz al Aslami, authentic, says, Wallahi, by Allah, the best of people in Medina were standing in line seeking to marry this noble girl because of that quality, the obedience to Allah and his messenger. That's the type that you want to have if your agenda is hereafter. If your agenda is dunya, then go for the beauty, go for the wealth, go for the health, go to for, for the green card, for the black card, all this, do it. But if your agenda is the hereafter, that's the type that you want. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our daughters and to guide our females. Wallahi, it's a heartbreaking experience for a father. And quite frankly, it scared me. I have a daughter myself, and I know a lot of you do. And it scares you. But the question that we really got to ask ourselves, what are we doing to prevent this from happening? We do not have higher education in Colorado yet, Muslim, Islamic where we could educate these teenagers about these issues. The alternative is public schools. And they are mingling with Christian boys and Jewish boys. And if the family is not strong, you're going to have a problem at your hand. The other solution is the uh, home whatever schooling and we know internet now is like virtual sinning, if you want. We have to think of a solution for our community here in Colorado, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us to serve his deen. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة